In this video, we're going to look at exercise 15-10A. And the problem, let's get the book over here. Let's do that. Let me, um, let me change screens that I'm recording on and I get the book over there. All right, good. So according to the book, we're given a static budget and an actual results budget. We're asked to calculate the flexible budget. And just in case, let's make sure we understand what we're being asked to calculate. And then I think we can go ahead and just look at the solutions and take a real quick look at where we need to go. And I think it'll be a better way of working the problem. So back to where I was. So we're given the static budget and we're given the actual results. We were asked to calculate the flexible budget. We've had the flexible budget in, in the last two videos. If, if you're watching things that I posted chronologically in the order that I posted them from top to bottom, you listed, then you've seen two videos already and we've had standard price times standard quantity, static budget, we didn't name it. Standard price times actual quantity, that's the flexible budget. Actual price times actual quantity, and that's just the actual results. We're asked to calculate this. All right, back to the book. Let me go back to the book. I think it'd be easier. Let's just go back real fast. All right, so the static budget has 60,000 kites. Is that right? Kits, kits, blood pressure kits. I, know, I thought I saw an E there. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, kits. All right. So direct materials divided by 60,000 will give you a per unit. Direct material, direct labor, same, and variable cost, same. That'll give you a per unit cost. Do note that the static budget that we budgeted at 525 for fixed overhead, actual results were 512, 500. Don't make that any more complicated than it really means. It could be as simple as somebody salaried, resigned, and the replacement started, you know, weeks later, month or two. I don't know. Well, it's not much of a difference there, but whatever. You guys get the idea. It could be just something that simple. And I've done it before. I've, you know, had a, when I was in the business world, had a position open and things were going great. And we wanted to fill the position, but things were going great. And why not wait till next year? And, you know, the money saved can help the bottom line for that year. All right, and that's an example of how the actual fix could be different than the fix. You always harp on it's going to be the same, it's not going to change, and and you know in the period of time, right? As long as it's within a relevant range. Well, in that case, there could be things that happen in the real world that aren't, you know, according to the theory of the textbook, that would cause a fix to be different. But fixed costs always behave just like we've just spoken. The only problem is that we had like the example. Somebody resigned and their replacement didn't start the very next day, making the same exact dollar amount. Heck, you know, we could have had turnover and hired somebody. You know, they were a very tenured employee and their replacement is, you know, newer and not paid as well. I don't know the story, but I'm giving you examples, right? The possibilities that it could be. All right, so, and I sent the... Solutions over to the other screen. Here we go. So 525, the cost given from the problem in the book, divided by 600,000 is 875. Direct labor, total, 450, divided by 60,000, gives you 750 and variable the same way too. So these variable overhead, these are your variable costs. That's why we could do what we did. All right, so <clears throat> actual results were given. So this whole column right here, I'm just going to put a green line around it. This whole column is given to us. So as you work it, and you're working these manually or in connect, just be very cognizant that, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. This is already given to you. The flexible budget, on the other hand, is the standard price. We just calculated those times actual quantity. In this case, the actual quantity is 64,000 kits. That's actual, actually what was sold. So it'd be 875 times six, 64,000, 560, 750 times 64,000, be 482 times 64,000. Obviously, that's 128,000. Add them up, you get a million 168. Subtract the budgeted fixed costs. 
So if we were to look at fixed costs, according to these three, that means we would have 525 under the static, 525,000 under the flexible, and under actual, we'd have 512,500, 512,500. Okay. Now, that was A and B part of it and then b also said are they favorable or are they unfavorable and we're looking at the variance between um actual and, and uh flexible and this is standard price times actual quantity so basically what we're looking at is the differences in price standard and actual times actual quantity so Keep that in mind. We're really looking at, did we end up paying less? So for direct materials, did we pay less for direct materials? Because we've isolated this price holding actual quantity constant. We did not, I mean, sorry. Yeah, 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 we did not. It should have been 560 based on our standard price on the same quantity in both columns it's, it's 560 we spent 655 that means the actual price was much higher not good i don't know what's going on the hiring man i mean the purchasing manager was there an issue i don't know i don't know who's buying i don't know the reason you know a lot of companies with inflation the way it is and supply chain disruptions the way they've been this could be out of kilter for many companies and they look at it and they analyze it and they're like, yeah, we're paying more for product now than we were two years ago, last year, okay? Direct labor, it went down. Actual is less. Good, good, um, that's good. Favorable, now look, we all want people, our friends, family, people we know to do really well financially. So I'm not cheering that people are making less. I don't know what the story is that, uh, were we able to make our goal with less people? Somebody, you know, retired and we gave them a great party and we're like, you know, let's just see how it goes without replacing them. And it did work out. I don't know the story, but it, so let's take, keep it positive. Variable overhead. No, no, actual results were higher than they should have been. And again, remember, it's standard price minus actual, if you wanted to do it that way, you could. It's, um, Let's just write it down. Standard price, that's an S, minus actual price times actual quantity. That's really what we we're doing right here. So is the actual price less? And yeah, it is not, it's higher, so it's unfavorable. Now you could take 95,000, add 7,000, 95,000 unfavorable, 7,000 unfavorable, Add them together and then subtract out 16,000 favorable. Now, the biggest amount of these numbers here is unfavorable, so the answer will be unfavorable. So 95 plus 7 is 102, minus 16,000 is 86, and it's unfavorable. Obviously, that's the bigger number of these three uh, totals. You, you, um, unfavorable is the bigger number, so it's you here. You could have done this. Total variable costs are higher, so that's unfavorable, and you got gotten the difference. Fixed manufacturing costs. Actual is less. That's favorable. Total manufacturing costs. Yeah, you know, you did the math, and you got 1693000 compared to $1,766,500, and that's an unfavorable variance by 73.5. All right, so the manager, if you're just looking at production, if you're only looking at production, the manager did really good with uh, um, direct labor. Not so good with direct materials and variable overhead. Uh, you know, I don't understand what's going on there, and we need to dig into it further and get a better idea. It could be the manager's fault. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just things that are beyond even the company's control. All right. <laughs> And I'm going to pause, you pause your video and you read this, pick up anything else from it that I didn't cover. C said, why didn't we put sales revenue and why didn't we put operating income? 
Well, the, based on the way the, this operating center is ran, this person, um, Mr. McCoy, is responsible for what's just listed here. And to evaluate Mr. McCoy on anything else wouldn't be correct. So these are uh, what he's responsible for. Or, it's Mr., yeah. What he's responsible for, and that's just the way it is. And I've already said that could be supply chain disruptions that are beyond his or the company's control. Inflation's higher. You know, a lot of people are, you know, coming back from COVID over the last few years wanted to make more or possibly they would not work um, anymore. Maybe they didn't want to they want to work remotely and they quit. So it depends on the company, right? It could be that person's res McCoy's responsibility or not. It just depends. You have to be... Uh, know the facts and really dig into it so this is great it holds people accountable and then we can really dig into the numbers and figure out what's going on and i don't like it to be a tool a hammer we just bang somebody over the head and, and just beat them up over this is a useful tool holds them accountable coaching team effort group effort try to get better together but now look if somebody's just not doing their job right that's that's a different conversation all right, I can't think of anything else I can do on exercise 15-10A. If you have any questions, please give me a call or email me. Thank you.